Good evening. Tonight, let's do some Gerstner waves. Let's take the render target uh, demo, well, tutorial from the wiki, let's throw it out, and let's do this with Matt. You can see here, the buoy is floating on water. The waves are a little more regular, less angular, less jaggy. These are calculated. These are not coming from material, they're not coming from height maps that are crossing each other. So tonight, I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, let's get back in the editor. So from in here, if I go back to the old waves, the ones from the wiki, you end up with, well this is, this is from the original demo. So what you have here is the waves are kind of choppy, the the, the the little waves, the small waves, are c not really following the big waves. The big waves are actually just peaks that are rolling around the surface. They're just dragging around, along a plane. Because this is two height maps that are just crossing. It's not really realistic. What we want instead is something that's a little more realistic. So we switch to original waves which is a mathematical model that is closer to how real waves behave. So right here you can see the water is more regular. You still have those tall peaks and everything is just rolling along. The buoy is, f is just rocking back and forth instead of being oddly displaced by these large mountains of peaks and so on. So let's see how I did this. First, what we need is to change the material. Uh, the material for our water, instead of being the one that was in the wiki, we want to use one that is, ba that is generated all matte, completely in the material itself. The final material, the color part is, the is pretty much the same thing as it was before. So you've got your two, well, your two gradients. Let's refresh these, there we go. So you've got your blue and your dark. The Fresnel for the normal that just varies between the two colors based on the angle. Um, there we go, finally loaded here. So all your other values, your just metallic, uh, the roughness, specular, these are all the same as they were in the wiki, so same as that material. Difference here is we are summing up a bunch of Gertzner waves through a material function, and we're actually doing it twice with different uh, medium wavelengths and amplitudes. Adding them together, lerping the normals, passing that to the displacement directly, and passing that to the normal. Uh, pin. The other thing that's added is the texture I used to use for the height map. I'm still using it just to do these little micro waves on the surface. So th this part is the same as the old panners and everything. It's a texture sample for the normal. Same one as the one in the wiki and I'm just lerping it with the clusters that are calculated. So let's go deeper into this. The wave itself, first, actually before I show all of this, if we go on the web, this is all based on GPU GEMS uh, effective water simulation for physical models. This article is what all my equations come from. So if you look it up, you can just search uh, Google GPU GEMS Ocean and you have pretty much a step-by-step -step on how to do Gertzner wave. The only thing is it's heavy on math. Uh, you've got everything for the actual wave equation, the binormal, tangent equation, and the normal. It even goes further into making them essentially look nicer. Uh, they even have explanation on using shores, uh, doing shore manipulation, things like that. Uh, right now, all we're going to do is implement this equation 
and the normal. So the equation itself looks like this. It's not as big as it looks. Uh, let's let's go through it piece by piece. So first thing we want in this material function is we'll need the direct. Actually, the first thing is we want the position. So there's an input for uv, which defaults to the absolute world position. We also have your wavelength input. Wavelength input the wave steepness, the amplitude, the time plus phase that we add together. And I added direction, so you have your direction vector that's going to be your central direction, and there's also a scalar to rotate that by an angle. So the equation, if we go back to it, is we're let's look just at the z it's going to be amplitude times sine of the wavelength times the dot product of the position plus time and fa time plus time times phase for the xy position it's the original points x and y plus the sum of the steepness times amplitude times the dot product component to x and y of the position times the cosine of the wavelength times again the dot product of the position plus phase times time. So all of these this entire equation is implemented here so position times wave uh, direction dot sorry uh, so you've got the dot product of the direction with the position. So there's the dot product. It's multiplied by the wavelength, which here I actually, I take the wavelength, I do 2 pi over wavelength, so I to take it to frequency, because this frequency I want to actually put in the equation, not the wavelength itself. So lambda times direction dot plus time this long branch here is the time plus phase this is then redivided by 2 pi uh, I had to do that I've noticed that sine and cosine were if I just pipe, pipe it directly in uh, they were off it, it did not match the sine and cosine that I do in code So once this is in, I calculate the two dear the direction x dot x times the steepness amplitude cosine. These are the parts from this part of the equation. So these go straight into the final result for the displacement. And for the z component it's the sine times the amplitude so right here amplitude times sine and the sine's input is again the direction the, the direction dot position times lambda plus the time and that's the Gertzner wave the normal is again same as the equation so, so it's the steepness times wavelength time amplitude times sine f for your z components of your normal and it's a direction times component x and y or not times but dot component x and y f times wavelength times amplitude times the cosine for uh, for the X and Y component. So we have right here the multiplication from up here, the subtraction because we want them negative, so 0 minus, so it's the sum of, so negative, negative, and 1 minus for the Z component. Now one thing that we d I did add recently is this extra pin, so summing normal, 
is these part these equations inside the sum so I don't actually negate it or do one minus the reason I do this is when combining multiple Gertzner wave which I'm about to show I needed the actual normal that has not been transformed already to negative so if I close this and then I go to the cluster so obviously if I just use one Gertzner wave it's going to look odd it's just going to be one wave alone in the ocean it's going to look like a wave generator and there's not going to be much to the world so what we want is we want to actually compile multiples so we have this material function here which calls the Gertzner wave eight times sorry about that and for each of those nodes we actually vary all the, val the values so we come in with medium wavelength median amplitude medium direction and each of these the first one is using the values directly from the medium from the input second one we rotate it just a bit and we multiply it by half we cut it in half third one we multiply it by two then one and a quarter three quarters one and a half uh, and so on and all of these are then added with each other added again so each group so these two are added together then these two are added with these two and then these four are added with these four again added together in the end we divide by eight because we have eight inputs for the normal we break out the components we do the subtraction to negate it same as the equation here and the one minus for the z components we do, so that gives us our output normal for the displacement it just divide by eight and push out the displacement directly so these clusters these clusters of eight waves are then in the main material right here so for here we said two and a half meter median wavelength oh sorry so that would be 25 meter median wavelength two meter amplitude and the direction we just decided to put the two clusters at the same 0 0.1 so they're just going as 0 1 so they're just going along the y direction as the medium direction the second set of waves same thing just 1000 and 115 they're a little smaller these are then added together divided by two and put to world displacement the normal coming out of them this time instead of doing the proper handling of the normals I just lerp them together lerped it with the original displacement map just to have a bit of extra noise or high frequency noise and push that straight to the normal so that's how you have that's my material which is compiling right now Eventually the ocean will show up. Okay, so there we go. The buoy is floating on these waves that are mathematically generated from the equations I just showed you. Now, to get the height you all remember from the buoyancy tutorial so if I go back to my buoy pond we were processing the wave height at a point in here we were then evaluating the wave height at that point and from in here we were going to ocean manager 
which is inputted here, and we were getting the wave height at that point. Now, what's happening here is we have to go in code. In code, the get wave height at point is actually summing up two clusters of Gertzner waves with the exact same input that we have in our material. This will, in the future, I plan on parametrizing to actually have input parameters for all these values. Right now it's hard-coded, I just wanted to make a match. So to calculate the cluster, it's the same that you saw in the Ocean Manager, or in the material, actually. Uh, material, whoops, wrong set. So in here, if we go in the cluster, so all these values, the times uh, half, times two, times 1.25, they're all repeated here. So the waves match exactly the same. And the actual equation to calculate the wave, what was shown in the actual material, or the original material function, this equation, is also in code and this is the exact same equation just much easier to read in code than it is in the blueprint and this is added <coughs> sorry this is added summed up with the cluster and then the clusters are added together the same way as the material does it so we get the exact same value for the exact same locations at the same time because again, the, the time value is inside the material and is also inside the ocean manager. So this gives us height, so the buoy can now know where to float from. So this is, this is how I changed my, my model to be mathematical. The problem with the render target approach was in UE4, we the, the to read from a render target was slow. Uh, in the past, when I was working with XNA, it used to be really fast to be able to read once per frame, copy a dynamic buffer, send it through the shaders, modify it, send it back, read the values from it in a loop, uh, in the main game loop, so I could get the height map values at every frame. This took no time at all. Uh, in the Unreal Engine right now, they have a lot of optimizations, they have a different pipeline. To actually get to those values, the fetch is expensive, and it makes it not, well, it's, it's too expensive to actually use in real time. You could change, instead of reading it every frame, you could read the render target every other frame. There are ways you could improve performance, but as soon as you get a larger texture, like, I was getting a drop of 20 or 30 frames per second, and the texture was only 256 by 256. In XNA, I noticed almost no performance hit for 1024 by 1024. That made a huge difference in the resolution quality of the ocean or other height map uh, tests you were doing. So, right now, this is not a good approach. It's better to switch to mathematical, and this is what I just showed tonight. So, have a good night.